Am I accused of a crime? I'm not letting... I, I do not consent to you going through my wallet. I do not consent to you going through my wallet. Is this on you have any more guns? I do not. Yes, I do. I have a 45 on my side. On my left side. Do you have a concealed carry permit? Yes, I have a concealed carry permit. Okay. Sir, you have no right to go through there. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, he didn't ask me for it, did he? Not if you carry this, no, sir. I wouldn't have asked you either. He could have asked me for my concealed carry permit. But even if I had a concealed, did not have a concealed carry permit, I can walk around with a rifle. When you alarm people and they call us, then we can... Okay, and, you, and did you explain to them what the law is, sir? They don't care what the law is. Uh, but do you care alarmed. what the law is? This day and age, they're alarmed when they see somebody with weapons. Do you have any more weapons on you? We have the right, by law, to disarm you until okay, we... Okay, do you know what that law says? That law says if you feel threatened... You and I felt threatened. Are carrying this? Well, if you threatened. feel threatened, you're a sorry excuse for a police officer. All right, that was uh, Master Army Master Sergeant C.J. Grisham, who was out uh, with his son uh, carrying his AR-15 in a confrontation with police. Why don't you walk us through that whole situation? Well, you know, so what happened was it started out very calm. Uh, you know, he, he asked me a few questions. I answered his questions. And then without any warning, without telling me, he, he went to grab my rifle and take it off of me. Um, at that point, I... I very calmly, and this is going to come out in the dash cam footage because, uh, unfortunately, we I can't release that because it's been gagged uh, for public release. But the dash cam footage is going to show that uh, everything was very calm until he tried to disarm me without telling me. And, you know, as a soldier, that's just something you just don't do. I mean, you shouldn't do that to anybody. Um, it wasn't until he threw me into the car and, that I got very upset. Um, he had a gun to my head. And my son was right there, having to witness the whole thing. Um, but what, I, I kept what happened with to, your what happened with your son? Well, my son had to sit there and, and watch the whole thing. Um, but but he was very brave in the sense that he was able to, uh, you know, get the whole thing on camera and hold the camera for me while this was happening because I couldn't believe that it was happening. I I do a lot of work with the police department here. I'm on the the VFW's. Uh, public safety commission and every year we give a check and an award to the top police officer and firefighter here in temple we have a great department so the whole thing was just very awkward um and my my goal was just to try and find out why i had just gotten thrown against the car and why they were trying to take my guns from me when we're in the middle of nowhere in the country uh just walking down a road and throughout the entire thing they never told me i asked them numerous times dozens of times what have I done? What have I done against the law that I'm in handcuffs, that you're throwing me into a squad car? And at one point, they say that I'm rudely displaying a firearm. And well, he that, makes reference that, what, to, what does that mean? And is that a crime? It, it's not a crime in Texas that I know of. Um, there's no such thing as a rudely displaying uh, mm. section of the penal code or anything. I, I think what they're talking about, and the, the sergeant that showed up, uh, even made reference to it is it was strictly because of the type of weapon that I had. You know, if I'd have had some nondescript looking wood stock uh, bolt action rifle, it probably wouldn't have happened. But did, because did, I had the scary looking assault rifle, well, quote unquote, I don't own any assault rifles. I own AR-15s. Yeah. Uh, did, did a um, neighbor call because they saw you with the weapon, or somebody in the cabin saw you or something? Well, it couldn't have been a neighbor, Sean, because um, right, up to that point, the only people I had passed was my family's home, so it had to be yeah. somebody that drove by. Okay. Um, the the only thing is, I'm listening to this, and again, I wasn't there, so I don't know what happened. Um, it's it's funny because I recently, well, I guess it goes back a year now. I had a really, really rude cop pull me over, and and just was just mean and rude and rude and mean. Now I got to tell you. That was the exception to the rule of all the policemen I've met in my life. And that, it is here too, Sean. And, and that was the one exception. The, but what I did is I kind of went just a little bit in the opposite direction than you did. And I'm not saying you're, I'm right and you're wrong or anything, but I just, I just like, yes, sir. Just, yes, sir, I'm very sorry. You know, I just went overboard with it because this guy wanted a confrontation. And I wasn't right. going to give it to him. And, and up to that point, Sean, I, that's exactly how the conversation did go. Yeah. He walked right up to me, and he grabbed my weapon, and I was very calm. We had a, you know, he asked me what we were doing. I told him what we were doing. When he asked me why I had the rifle, I told him I had the, why I had the rifle. 
yeah. when he went to even when he went to go and disarm me, I calmly put my hand up and I calmly told him, I said, dude, why are you trying to disarm me? And as soon as I just touched the buttstock of the weapon, I didn't even grab anywhere near the trigger assembly. I, I grabbed on the buttstock and, and very calmly, this is what the dash cam footage will show when it comes out. Have you seen it yet? Oh, yeah, we have it. We just can't release it. The, okay. the, the judge put a gag order on, on the actual release of it. But obviously I was there. I know what happened. Yeah. And, and, and as soon as I calm, and I, I kid you not, this is not any type of, uh, you know, bloviation, I, I calmly touched the buttstock of the weapon and said, dude, why are you trying to disarm me? Just like that. He instantly pulled his gun out, threw me into the hood of the car with the gun pointed at the back of my head, and that's when I remembered to turn on the camera. And at that point, any, you know, any kindness kind of went out the window. So in other words, the, the, we're, t we're picking this up very late in this whole thing. The, in other words, the tape. This all actually it all escalated from zero to to sixty in about thirty no. seconds. All right. Well, what is the status of your case? I'm going to get back to our our, our other guest here. But what is the status of your uh, of your case? Well, uh, my attorney Kurt Glass is uh, still assisting with the criminal matter. It's uh, I'm charged right now with interference with public duties. I was originally arrested for uh, resisting arrest, and then I'm looking to file a civil lawsuit uh, here as, as soon as I can find an attorney. All right. Well, I appreciate you updating us on that. Now, we also go back uh, to the situation in Medford, Oregon. Corey Thompson, he fired a warning shot with his AR-15. He, too, he had three tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. And and like CJ, who had two tours of duty, um, it was involving an AR-15, a guy breaking into the back of his house. If you're just joining us, we, we went through all his case with him in the, in the last half hour. But uh, what is the status now of your case? Uh, the status, uh, sir, is I'm being charged with menacing, reckless endangerment of a person, and unlawful discharge of a firearm. I, I, I just can't, cannot understand in any way how the police have come to that determination when the person that was breaking into your house had outstanding warrants for burglary and assault. And right. how come I don't that, understand either. I mean, you're, you're, an, you're, you're a veteran of this country, just served your country, and carried an AR-15 issued by your country. Now, all of a sudden, they take the word of, of a guy wanted for warrants on burglary and assault over you. They weren't even there, but they're making definitive statements, seemingly taking his side. I don't get it. I don't either, sir. It, it just seems very, very strange. Yeah. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, both Corey and CJ, if it's okay with you, we'd like to follow up on TV next week and, and put the both of you on, because I think America needs to be aware of some of these situations. And and uh, I, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. 